Younger. Thank you, thank you. I feel the love. Y'all heard Showtime at the Apollo. Y'all said black guy coming. <laughs> I don't disappoint you. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to say we're here for a worthy cause, so it's a lot of comedians coming up tonight. I don't have a lot of time, so uh, the guy who's running the show, he's just going to tell me when my time is up. I might be in the middle of a joke, and I'm just going to leave. I uh, want to let y'all know that. My name is Rick Younger, rickyounger.net. <laughs> and I'll leave abruptly. <laughs> like a representation of New York because there's so much cultural diversity here in New York. <laughs> no, because, you know, one thing I love about living in New York, New York is so culturally diverse that you always see things that just totally shoot holes in all the stereotypes. Yeah, and I saw something not too long ago that really touched me. I was on a subway platform at 59th Street in Columbus Circle and I saw three Asian tap dancers. <laughs> You're not surprised. <laughs> you know, and, and it comes from a true place. The true thing that that comes from is that a lot of times when Mexicans want to come across the border into the U.S., what they will do is they will call someone who's already in the U.S., have been waiting at the border with a car that's running, and as many Mexicans as possible will run, jump in the car, and then make a run for it. So you would probably never try to get to 11 people in a car, because you don't think it can be done. But Hector Martinez knows that. that we black men hope to never have debunked. And ladies, my eyes are up here. Talking about that black male endowment man. And I'm not saying it for myself, not that I'm not saying it for myself. But it does come from a true place. No, you gotta realize when they first brought blacks here to America, they brought us here to be slaves, so what they did is they went to Africa, got the biggest, strongest Africans they could find. Meanwhile, here in America, the size of the average white man at that time was about five, six. So you imagine little five, six found father going up on the auction block, check out this African-sized African. <laughs> for some reason, the Africans' pants fall off, I don't know how that happened. And you see this African-sized penis into his little, you know, family father hands, it looks huge. <laughs> goes on to their back. All black men have huge penis. <laughs> the myth begins and it's been living even until this day. Yeah. And I don't just share this information without having done the research. I read a book. I read a book entitled Hung. Written by a guy named Scott Poulson Bryan. P-O-U-L-S-O-N dash Bryan with a T in case you want to look it up. And in this book they reference a study where they measured men from three different ethnic groups. Black men, white men, Asian men. And then, based on the study, they determined that black men were larger than white men who were larger than Asian men. But did you know the difference between each ethnic group was one inch? That's right. The myth has taken on a life of its own. So y'all sit up here looking at me like I got 12 inches of man. You looking at me like I got a whole extra penis worth of penis in you. When really it's just one very thick inch. That curve to the left. So once again, they my eyes on me. And I can tell every woman in here who has been affected by the curve in their lifetime. But goodness. 
shutters in the room. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Whew, I love doing comedy. I love doing comedy, but I started out as a singer, but I had to give it up because I got a real problem with the music industry. To me, the music industry is a strange, bizarre world where things just don't make sense. You got people out here pursuing careers in the music industry, very talented people who cannot get record deals. Then you get very talented people with record deals who can't sell. Then you have people where you can't even figure out how they got a record deal. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how Macy Gray got a record deal. Because to me, Macy Gray sounds like Donald Duck getting choked. <laughs> The rapper Notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls be a sex symbol. <laughs> he used to brag about it in songs like Black and Ugly, Elba, Elba, Ugh. It wasn't just real, did Biggie sound hungry when he was rapping? <laughs> no, did I know that you was from my buster? Ugh. I love buster. Precious buster, great bar buster, honey buster. Can somebody give me a cup of gravy? Oh. I just saw a light. Was that means it's time to go? Aww. Aww.